And how can you, if you're in sales or whatever it is that you're doing, master your craft to be a well-oiled machine to run efficiently? What that means in sales, how can you master your language? How can you master every single step of the sales process? How can you master the types of questions that you're asking? How can you master storytelling? Welcome to the Rising Leader Podcast, bringing forth the new wave of rising leadership and helping leaders find purpose, connection, and results. This is your host, founder of Alluviance, Alex Kremer. What is up, y'all? Welcome back to this episode of the Rising Leader Podcast. As always, this is your host, Alex Kremer. And, you know, I love doing these solo episodes because when it's just me uh, getting able to share, um, you know, I talk with a lot of leaders and sales professionals every single day. I run a community of tech sales professionals and leaders. Uh, I'm constantly coaching people on a one-on-one basis. We're running retreats. I'm working with corporations. I, I have a unique perspective into how are people feeling? <laughs> What's going on? What's actually relevant in today's world? What are people feeling good about? And also, where are people struggling? And, you know, I've been feeling a common theme amongst many people. And actually, I've been feeling this theme within myself. Um, and, you know, I do my best not to project my own work or the own things that are that are going on with me. Um, but there's a common theme that I'm seeing amongst people where they're saying, hey, life is hard. Life is hard. And, you know, I say that tongue in cheek because we are so blessed. We have so many wonderful uh, things in our life. We have uh, luxuries that so many people don't have. We had food to eat. We have a roof over our head. We have wonderful relationships. Um, you know, it, I feel sometimes uh, a little, you know, insecure saying life is hard. But I want to kind of like expand a little bit into what do I mean when, ah, man, life can sometimes just get heavy. And I want to, you know, really kind of bring together of how to actually work through that and how to actually make something more that comes from that. And here's what I'll say, you know, when I speak with people and say, ah, life is heavy, usually I hear it's it's because of a few things. First off, work. <laughs> I think that's of no surprise. Um, and work is hard, whether you're doing something you absolutely love or whether you're doing something that you want to get out of and move on to the next thing, right? If you're doing something you love, um, you care about it. You want to put out the best product possible. You want to uh, really uh, care about the people that you're serving. You have a mission. And oftentimes, especially in my personal experience, when you have something you care about, there's a, the feeling of like, oh, you know, I got a lot to do. I'm just going to work harder. And it's, and it's a valuable thing to fall back on. I'm just going to work harder. Uh, and that's actually not always the right methodology for doing it. Sometimes we need a little bit more spaciousness. So work can be hard um, no matter if you love it or you like it uh, or you don't like it. Also, we have our relationships, right? Whether this is romantic relationship, whether this is friends, community, your boss, your team, uh, those are nuanced. They are sensitive. Everybody is dealing with their own stuff and could be projecting on other people what they're actually dealing with. Uh, everybody's trying to keep their mental health strong, right? Whether it be meditating, breath work, cold plunges, you name your vice in order to keep yourself sane and to feel good. Everybody's trying to keep themselves physically healthy as well, right? Prioritizing working out, going on runs, yoga, whatever it is that you do. And also everybody's trying to, you know, prioritize spaciousness, right? Not get so stuck in the day-to-day -day grind, right? People want vacations. People want to sleep in. People want to, you know, not have to worry about the next thing on their to-do list. And a lot of times um, we can try to hold all these different pieces together. We can try to be the one who's, oh, you know, I was just, I was just going to hold and keep it together. It's, it's not going to fall. I've got this. And after a while, it's, it's kind of like, you know, do you think you're smarter than the divine intelligence of the universe? There's a feeling of just needing to let go that it's all going to work out. 
whether or not you are doing what you are doing. And here's what I will tell you is, from my perspective, the formula. The formula to not make things so hard. The formula to feel a greater sense of spaciousness and meaning and purpose in your life. The formula to actually feel like you're not doing this alone. The first of which is develop your vision. It's, it's probably the most important thing that one can actually do. And you all have heard me say this on the podcast before, but the purpose of a vision is not necessarily that you achieve it, but specifically it's who it causes you to be today. Right, Because when you think about what are you really meant to be doing, right? what's the purpose that you're we'll put on earth to do, when we allow ourselves to step into that, it, it has an ability to actually open our hearts a little bit and make us say, oh, this activity that I'm doing, this task, this thing that I'm so stuck in, it's actually for something more, for something greater. And especially as sales professionals or as sales leaders, um, when you are selling somebody, right, enrolling somebody into your product or into your vision, there's a lot of power when you can come from the frequency of your vision, of your purpose, because you're going to come from a different level of aliveness when that is occurring. You feel a greater mojo, a greater, oomph, this is just like happening so much more. And when we can do that, that, that transmission that we create, it starts to transfer onto people, right? If I'm passionate about something, about my mission, about my vision, I can transfer that passion onto another person right there, right? I can feel it and then they can feel it. And also in sales, one of the most important things one can do, or in leadership, one of the most important things one can do is to actually figure out what is this person's mission? What is this person's vision? What does this person actually want? So rarely do we actually put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and try to figure out, hey, what is this person actually feeling? What do they want? What is their unique lens on the world? And when we allow ourselves to do that, when we are feeling a sense of purpose and vision, when we are coming from that transmission, Right? When we are getting clear on what the other person's is, you start to create a powerful synergy that you start to tap into something that's much greater than just yourself. Right? There's actually meaning that starts to unfold when you're doing that. So that's number one. If you don't have a vision, <laughs> you got to find it. And they say, Alex, how do you go about finding your vision? If you don't have a vision, your vision should be finding your vision. And there's a specific technique that you can go through, which is around coming into a, a level of self connection, tapping into your essence, which is the unique and authentic vibration of you, right? And then when we are coming from our essence, then we can actually develop what our vision is. So vision is number one. The second thing to overcome this, this, oh, I got this heaviness, this hardness. It's actually to come from your seat of essence, <laughs> Your seat of essence. And you might be like, Alex, what the hell is seat of essence? Your seat of essence, uh, and I was taught this from one of my teachers, Rob Renahan. He is a uh, former uh, study with, with Zen monks for eight years, was doing 90-day retreats on and off, on and off. And so he's got a lot of wisdom that he's imparted on me. And he talks about your seat of essence. It's almost like um, sitting and feeling the bowling ball that's in your hips, the bowling ball that's in your hips. It's, it's being weighted, it's being grounded down within your body. A lot of times when we start to get nervous or we start to get stressed or we start to get, oh my God, there's a lot going on, we get this frenetic energy that starts to actually rise within our bodies. It starts to go up to our chest, it goes up to our neck, it goes up to our head and we're thinking or we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out, we're trying to mentally understand what's actually going on and while our brains are an unbelievable uh, value to us, if we get stuck in there, we're missing out on, on a majority of the intelligence that we have. So much intelligence comes from our somatic, uh, our body, right? Our seat of essence. And so how can you actually come from that bowling ball in your hips, right? Even as I say that, I feel my tonality start to drop. 
I feel myself actually not having to think about the next thing I'm trying to think about. It's just naturally coming out of me. And it's not easy. This is one of the main places where I practice when I go and sit on a cushion. Hell, even when I go on a run, sometimes I try to feel my seat of essence and I actually start to expand out from just my body and I actually start to kind of feel the field around me. Your seat of essence is your truth. It's if you choose to believe in, in a higher power, it's the thing that's inside you that's actually connected to something greater. We try to rely so much on ourselves to figure out this thing called life. When in reality, there's something so much greater that we can be relying upon, that we can be asking for, that we could just simply be like, you know what? I'm going to let go and I'm just going to drop into my seat of essence. And even as I do that, I feel my heart open. It's like a freaking flower petal in my heart just starting to expand. I'm like, oh, you know what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay as long as I have my vision, as long as I'm committed to coming from my seat of essence. And as long as I'm trying to do something genuinely good, I'm trying to believe in something more than just myself. Now, the last piece when it comes to how do you overcome this feeling of hardness, this feeling of, oh my God, I got all this weight. Yes, it's important to have your vision. Yes, it's important to have your seat of essence. But let's not also forget your craft. Your ability to learn and master whatever it is that you're actually doing. I'm going to give the frame of being a sales professional because that's, you know, what my community is. That's that's what I've been for many years. And and it can be defined in so many other ways, but I like to say, know your craft uh, like a Ferrari. <laughs> like a Ferrari. If you think about a Ferrari and the engine of it, man, that thing is efficient. That thing runs well, right? There is things that are firing and making it so that you can speed up and stop and you can shift and you can change. That thing is a well-oiled machine, literally. And how can you, if you're in sales or whatever it is that you're doing, master your craft to be a well-oiled machine to run efficiently? What that means in sales, how can you master your language? How can you master every single step of the sales process? How can you master the types of questions that you're asking? How can you master storytelling? Right? So often, what I see is people get lost in, I need to have a vision. I need to come from my essence. Yes, absolutely. You do. That's actually, that's so important for sure. But don't forget that there's, you know, kind of the here and now. It's, it's the craft. It's, it's like being in the world still. You still need to improve at what you do. That's why it's so important to, to continuously study, to read books, to study film, to uh, take courses right? It's not just about meditating on your cushion every single day for 24 hours, unless that's what you choose to do to each his own. But it's about how do you come from that place and learn how to master your craft, right? How to actually master the tactics, the strategies, the frameworks, if you do those three things, if you develop your vision and you feel your vision often, right? One of the best ways that I like to feel my vision is I actually have a vision song. <laughs> Hell's Bells by ACDC is my vision song. Oftentimes, I'll take my Bose headphones and I'll put them all over my ears and I'll just drop it and I'll listen to that song. And it'll remind me of my vision in terms of what I'm really trying to do. And my vision is I'm really trying to lead a movement that taps people more into their essence, that helps people feel more of their aliveness, helps people master their craft. That's my vision. And I see large retreats. I see uh, me speaking on stage. I see the impact that I'm having for people. I feel fulfillment. I feel joy. I feel purpose from that. When I listen to Hell's Bells, I tap back into it. I close my eyes and I get lost in that. It's a great feeling. Have your vision. If you don't know what your vision is, your vision should be developing your vision. It's really important. The second, are you coming from your seat? 
<laughs> Are you coming from your truth? Are you thinking about the thoughts that you're thinking about and trying to make things happen and put so much pressure on? I need to figure this out. I need to work harder. Ah. Or are you letting go and you're trusting? Right? You're having faith that it's all going to work out the way it's supposed to as long as you're coming from your authenticity. Stop trying to put on the fucking masks. Stop trying to fit into the jersey that other people were giving you. Have the jersey fit onto you. What is the unique and unapologetic expression of you? And then also, how do you tap into that Ferrari? Right? How do you be that well-oiled machine of mastering your craft, mastering your language, mastering your skill set, the frameworks? If you do those three things, you have the opportunity to experience more joy. You won't get so stuck in the, oh my God, there's a lot going on here. You'll actually have an ability to feel like, mm, this life is good. And yes, it's going to be hard. But you can still experience joy even when it's hard. I'll give an example you know, sometimes people think, uh, I'm trying to be happy all the time. Happiness is not possible all the time. Shit happens. But you can actually feel joy moment to moment when you are serving something greater than yourself, when you have a purpose, when you have a mission. Even when you are struggling and you're getting knocked down and you're in that darkness, you can still feel joy because you know that you're working towards something bigger. It's not just about you. That is beautiful. Right now, this world is going through a really interesting time. I'm not sure what's going to happen. But what I do know is there's something new that's being birthed. People are wanting something more. They want meaning and they want community. And it's on each and every single one of us to make that happen. Tap into it yourself. Be a commitment to the work. And also find other people to be doing it with. So I appreciate you dropping in with me today. Make sure you're taking this and you're go spreading the good love with those around you, with your teammates, with your family, with your friends. And make sure you look in the mirror <laughs> and you say, you know what, man? You're doing good. You're doing good. Love you all. Thanks for listening to the Rising Leader Podcast. Make sure you hit that follow button so you get notified every time a new episode releases. If you know someone who wants to take their lives and their career to the next level, send them this episode so we can all rise together. For more information, check out alluvians.co. We'll see you next time. And in the meantime, keep letting it flow. <laughs>